Hey there, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. fans! Welcome to another episode of the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. After Show here on AfterBuzz TV. Tonight, we are talking about the Season 5 finale, The End. We're going to be breaking down the episode, talking about the team dynamics, breaking the time loop, and of course, saying goodbye. Stay tuned. You're tuning in to the destination for TV superfan discussion, AfterBuzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin it is so weird thinking that this could have been the very end of the series yeah oh man that is crazy i i'm glad it's not we get more yeah we get more <laughs> we get we yeah, about that's that. the big news that's the news um the, yeah, spoiler there is, alert there is no need for the news and gossip section at the end of the show well, we let's got still the news. do news and gossip because <laughs> so we'll, we can we'll see everyone in a year <laughs> It's a year and change. A year and some change. It's going to be a little bit of a way, but I, I'm hoping it'll be worth it. Anyway. Oh, the, we'll, oh, we'll have gray uh, hair. Oh, my gosh, guys. The next time we'll see each other is in the future. Yeah. Maybe Jesse and I will have no beard. Megan will have a beard. Oh, she'll have taken our beard powers. She'll Every have absorbed us. <laughs> <laughs> Soon your beard powers will be mine. Um, anyway, hey, guys. Welcome back to the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. After Show. We're going to be talking about the season five finale tonight i'm megan salinas let me go ahead and introduce my fantastic panel to my left zach wilson yes i am zach wilson uh i'm still zach wilson even though graviton is dead uh. he's my son is dead <laughs> are you gonna be all right I'll be fine. Right. He was going to blow up the world. <laughs> That's true. That was true. It was either him or the world. To his left, Jesse Klein. Hey, super excited to be here in the beard corner. Uh, <laughs> Tehran and I did fight to the death. Uh, Tehran won again, of course, and he is busy celebrating, so he's not here. I'm sorry. See, I... <laughs> making the assumption that like uh on, as an unusual but refreshing change you had actually won the bout to the death this time and oh. he was waiting to resurrect oh himself. absolutely not no he won <laughs> uh he won again and uh i am just uh he he's just it was a big celebration this was a contested fight and uh he won so he's out celebrating somewhere <laughs> Well, guys, we're sad that he couldn't join us, but be sure to t uh, send him your well wishes at I am Tehran. And we are going to be keeping an eye on the hashtag ABTVMarvel uh, for all of you guys following along on Twitter. Zach has got you guys covered on the live chat. I do. Thank you so much for joining us um, for this big finale. But season finale, not oh, series, which I, I will continue to repeat because it's good news. It's nice. Now, I, I like that they named it the end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nope. Could you, uh, again, it's so weird to think about that this might have been the very end of the series. Now, I didn't watch this episode until we walked in the door into the studio today. Um, I don't know when you guys checked it out, but all through the weekend, people were definitely like tweeting their feelings yeah. at us quite a bit. Lots um, of feelings thrown our Way. Lots of feelings. I'm gonna pull up some of them. See, what, see the, pull up one of the, some of the fun ones. So I, I was a little apprehensive going in uh, to the finale tonight. I, I wanted to check with you guys. What were your initial thoughts on this episode? Because it's kind of a mixed bag in terms of being uh, a standalone episode, potentially having been the series finale, and then just standing on its own as a season finale. I mean, yeah, I, I was anxious to see because we knew that they had made this episode the end of the possible end of the series. I was really just excited to see how they were going to pull that off. Yeah. Uh, Cuz I think this would like if this was the last episode. For me, I think this would have been a uh would have been a fine end to the series in that if if the main story of Shield as a whole is the kind of emotional arc between uh Daisy and Coulson, then we we got a very complete story as the show went through. We mm -hmm. got we got to see this father saying goodbye to his daughter and kind of leaving the future to her, which is which was a complete very satisfying story. There are like you know dumb nerd nitpicks that me and Zach have, <laughs> yeah. which we admit are dumb nerd nitpicks. But as a aren't they always? Yeah, of course. <laughs> but as <laughs> As a whole story, I think it, it was very complete and could have been a very a fine ending, yeah. and one of the better series enders or uh, uh, yeah series enders in our history as far as like being fans of shows. Yeah, series that's very enders true. really 
are almost always not satisfying. They're so difficult to pull off. Yeah. Even the ones that like I may like, I know a lot of people hate, and like there's some ones that I don't like that a lot of people love. And it's just it <laughs> Yeah, we'll never agree on Lost. Yeah. Um <laughs> But but even just like but especially shows that don't have big mysteries and things. Like the mysteries are hard to end, but yeah. shows that just like anytime you wrap up a show that's been on for six seasons um it's easier when you know okay i have this many at seasons like the leftovers without getting into the specifics of that show i think the leftovers is one of the best complete packages of a show because they knew we're ending it after season three they went into that season knowing this is it we're not coming back we're not doing any more we're gonna yeah. stop so they were it but like th it gets complicated when you're like well we want to end it but you also need to leave it just open enough that we might come back for another season yeah uh, and also like tease the studio so that they might give us that extra <laughs> season but also not piss off it, it it's a lot of things yeah. to juggle the... so i like the tahiti thing like bring tahiti oh. like the little bit at the yeah. end where we we really did bookend from season one so many pieces where this show has gone off the rails in every season <laughs> yeah, in absolutely. so many ways but like if this was the last shield episode of shield I would still want more from these characters, but like I almost would be, I would almost be more satisfied if season six was just not even called Agents of Shield, just called like Secret Warriors, I and mean, like Agents of Shield, it be cut be like is left as Coulson's show. Yeah. The uh, it's yeah, I kind of agree. If this had been the the very end, my my thoughts on it would be like. It was messy, but cathartic um, in terms of like, there were some missteps getting here. Um, we've had some missteps uh, at the beginning of the season and I feel like tying up all the loose ends there, there are a couple, I won't say missed opportunities, but there are some interesting choices um, getting to the end here. That being said, the emotional catharsis that we get is pretty satisfying in terms of Coulson's completed arc, as you were pointing out, Jesse, it's, it, yeah, it's it's a little bit of a mixed bag for me because I think it's a great standalone episode. And if this had been the end, I would have been like, like I said, it's a little messy, uh, but we got there. Knowing that we're getting one more season, I have a little bit of mixed feelings because yeah, we've we basically said goodbye to Coulson and we we've, we've closed the book on that chapter of the show. Well, it it is the messy kind of a lot of shows that run for a long time have like the turnover of actors and characters. And I think we're kind of getting that messy where we're seeing like Davis and we're seeing uh, what's her name? Piper. Piper. And we're like, they're more involved. And like, I believe that like Deke will probably come back now. I hope he does. I hope, uh, so like, too. I hope he does so, as well. But here's, here's a question. And this like somewhat it, like will lead into some, some a chip question that the chat has, but like, yeah. is Deke, Deke is alive, right? Like we're we're assuming based I, on this episode that Deke is alive. I think he's a multi-dimensional time child. <laughs> I think that's what we have to assume. Is that, that sounds silly, but yes, exactly that. I, I, think, he's, I think he's I think he's now a multi-dimensional time child because basically what from what we understand of time travel, what they have done is they have now created a split in the fourth dimension. It is now they have made choices differently than they normally would have and ended the loop and now split it. And now Deke is a dimensional traveler. He is no longer from the dimension that they exist in. Yeah. He is now from a separate dimension. It's... And not the same way that like the Marvel, like 616 and 1610 ultimate universes live separately. Those are two completely separate universes. This is, a this split. is like the timeline got broken the w one that Deke is originally from might still be there, but it does. But as far as like any of people, any of the people in our timeline are concerned, that is an inaccessible branch. But Deke is still travel from there, so it's unaffected. Yeah. So it's it's not Back to the Future. There's no fading out. It no. would be Back to the Future too, where a separate timeline is created. No, I'm saying no. it's, no. it's no. actually it's, it's actually not that oh, because yeah. like okay. there's yeah. no there's because no going back and changing it. It's just it's just different. They're now. parallel. Yeah, now. It's, yeah. It's just too different. You happen to pull the matter and energy that was Deke from this other timeline, and he can't go back there, but he's also not going to be affected 
by what happens now in the past. Let's let's talk about Deke for for a little bit, but really, really quick before we do, uh, we have a quick announcement for you guys. If you guys want to learn and grow and have fun in all areas of your life, we have a podcast for you. Yes, you guys know that we talk about it every week, but it really does make a difference what the way that you support our founder, Maria Menunos. And the best way that you can do that is to go to the podcast, Conversations with Maria Menunos, which is hosted by our, the AfterBuzz TV founder and comes out every Friday on iTunes. You're already probably on iTunes. If you're not, you're on YouTube, and iTunes is very accessible from the same computer or iPhone or Android device that you're using. I found computers uh, are great for iTunes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Conversations with Maria Menounos features celebrity and influencer interviews along with the secrets and tips on how to be better in all aspects of your life. Maria is a very uh, big life that she is happy to share with you guys. So please make sure that you go in there. You can learn a lot from her. I know that we have just working alongside her yeah. like at the studio. Um, so just go to iTunes and subscribe to Conversations with Maria Menounos. It's completely free. If you take the time to rate and comment, please let Maria know that we sent you. Just the three of us. <laughs> between, between you and me. Just, just the three of us. Um, it's a Conversations with Maria Menounos. Uh, please check it out and support not just us, not just Maria, but the AfterBuzz TV family as a whole. Yeah, guys, it means it means a lot when you support us, and it means even more when you support the people who give us this platform to talk about our favorite shows on. So thank you guys yeah. so, so much for doing that. Um, to follow up with the, what the, the other point that is affected by this timeline thing, like the other timeline thing the chat is asking about, <sighs> when the hell do we take place? And I have, like, in terms of... Infinity War. Well, I think we spoiler alert for Infinity War. <laughs> I, I think, think we, we were talking about it in the trailer. In that, I don't think they thought about including Infinity War because they thought it was the ser series finale. Yeah, I think they just did not. They chose if, to ignore the events of Infinity War if, to make a satisfying, happy ending. If yes. they had, if this was the end, and they had decided to take in the events of Infinity War, which BTW, spoiler alert for Infinity War, if for some reason you haven't seen it yet, mm. um, if they had decided to take in the events from Infinity War, it would have soured this as a series finale. Yes. It would have been a heartbreaking end to have Coulson and May on that beach and then have one or both of them fade into dust. <laughs> Coulson's <laughs> like, I've only got a week left, but I'm going to enjoy it with I'm gonna you. I'm going to enjoy it with you. May just... <laughs> I feel funny, Colson. <laughs> I don't feel so good. Uh, yeah, I mean that's the thing is like if it was a season finale, absolutely it would be it would be great to see like some key characters turn into dust and have that be the yeah. arc that we then go through for the next season. But and they I were wonder, treating it like a yeah, series and, finale. I wonder if that wasn't sort of in the cards at the very beginning of the series at, of the season. If they were like planning on making it so that you know, characters like Piper and Davies and maybe one or two members of our team faded away. But then when, the, like, their renewal was called into question, they tweaked it and they were just like, okay, let's just scrap that. If this is the end, then we want to make it a nice ending. Yeah. And so, again, like, that's annoying for us because we, who've been watching the show for uh, 30 years now... <laughs> uh, <laughs> Remember, like, how awesome it was, like, when Winter Soldier came out, or even mm -hmm. with Age of Ultron, when, like, the Sokovia plans that they got were from the Agents and S.H.I.E.L.D., and, like, uh, Doctor Strange, we started seeing that magic in the S.H.I.E.L.D. world as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's annoying, but it's, like... I'll give it to them. Like, they thought it was the end of their show. Yeah. And they didn't want to kill there's, half the cast the, and it's sad. There's, <laughs> yeah, there's it a makes lot sense. that we could be overly critical about for this as a as a season finale. Yeah. But, again, knowing that, like, this might have been the end, I feel like we're, we're a lot more forgiving or a lot more willing to be like, you know what, let's just roll with it because it's so beautiful. Yeah, and so, like, this is clearly... I, I don't think the show is saying like, well, all of these people survive. I think it's just like I think, and I believe that uh, the the producers have even confirmed that it's pre snap. Yeah, which uh, I I feel it's like the new year zero. <laughs> yeah. I feel like the the events of the show are this is in you know at the towards the end of Infinity War, and then we cut to black and we have our credits, and then we hear us like yeah. the second it cut to black, I actually like snapped while we were watching <laughs> the show. <laughs> Like, and this beautiful moment is 
definitely sullied by the fact that half the world is gone. Uh, also, I'm, I'm getting some corrections in the chat. Yes, it, it was 40 years ago, not 30 years ago. I apologize. <laughs> Thank you, guys. We can always count on you uh, to keep us on point. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, let's let's dig into this a little bit. Let's talk about um, the talking about the team dynamic a little bit because at the very start, we've had this a lot this season, different members of the team landing on, you know, different time travel theories about uh, and different feelings on fate and destiny and feelings on whether or not we should let Coulson live or whether or not we should try to just kill Talbot. Um, and we, we see that come to a head at the beginning of this episode when both Yo-Yo and May make executive decisions for everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> First May or first Yo Yo tries uh, to take the in uh, take the serum so that they can't give it to Coulson, and then May destroys the odium so that they can't use it to kill Talbot. Yeah, and well, to possibly kill Talbot. Like that's yeah, that, that's, that was still a gamble. <laughs> that's the thing is like possibly heal Coulson and possibly kill Talbot. They don't know if either of these things will work. Yeah, but they're <laughs> acting like they definitely do know if these things will work. <laughs> Yeah, it is interesting that they're, like, acting in absolutes, but I kind of think that's that, from their perspective, it's just these are the two best shots we have. Yeah. It's like these are our best options in a world where we don't know what the hell is happening next. For sure. Um, but, yeah, it does feel a little like, okay, everybody, this is a team, like, you're not even listening to the director. Yeah. Uh, of she, like Colson is still your director. Like yeah. you're supposed to listen to him. It's it's tough because the director is saying, just let me die, and nobody's ready to let him go. And anytime Yo Yo goes, he's right, they're all like, Okay, you wanna kill Colson? And she's like, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying you're all making a lot of assumptions. But she's also I mean, if she hadn't killed Ruby then Graviton wouldn't exist. Mm -hmm. Like, she's making a lot of assumptions herself, and so far is just acting like, thinking, like, number one, if she had combined the the uh, for, uh, serum with the odium, then Quake never gets her power-up juice. Yeah. And no one slips that to Quake in her gauntlets, and we don't kill Graviton. Like or or blast them into space. <laughs> By the way, uh, we found out where uh, we found out where they'd been hiding the budget. Uh, <laughs> It was under the giant Chicago battle bed. <laughs> Underneath that big crust of the earth. Yeah, yeah. They, had to, they had to lift up uh, a part of the earth to oh, get when, to it. When they got that juicy Chicago cookie core. <laughs> oh, that's where the budget was. Yeah. Oh, we found that was, it. That's, uh, you, said, you described it that way before the show. And I was just like, it's so perfect. <laughs> Um, I, I do want to shout out the performance here because uh, this is Yo-Yo's breaking point. And I I really loved this moment of like, I'm living in a nightmare yeah. and I'm screaming and none of you can hear me. And Gemma, you know, tries to console her and she's like, yeah, but you won't listen. And yeah, go ahead. Well, it's like they are listening. They just think you're wrong. <laughs> Like there's a difference. <laughs> like, <laughs> but she Yo Yo is the only one that's gotten to talk to her future self, mm -hmm. and everything she's tried to do to break the loop since that happened has only made everything fall into place for it to happen. Yeah, yeah. Like she is, she has made sure the loop continues, <laughs> <laughs> and, and that that has to be that has to be a terrifying sort of situation to be in knowing that no matter what you've done thus far not only have you lost a a good chunk of yourself uh in terms of like her arms you know she will never be the same uh because of that but also she's still potentially going to be losing mac and colson and the world's going to be broken apart and she she also knows that on top of all of that she will eventually get captured and killed and then resurrected again and again, again, and, again. And, again and again yeah. anytime they need to harvest stuff for inhumans that is a terrifying future to be aware of sure yeah so i i really do just love this performance here so yeah she was great yeah that was great. But then May makes the executive decision of, nope, we're using it for Coulson. <laughs> 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 like, 
May was such a boss in this. Yeah, she was fantastic. <laughs> when she comes to save the day with Mac, I was like, yes, that oh, was amazing. She murdered those discount sub zeros. So yeah. good. It was great. <laughs> They're just oh. a couple of noob cybots. Yep. <laughs> Mortal Kombat fans out there. <laughs> May with Odium would be frightening. Oh my god. Can you yeah. imagine the yeah. violent streak she would go on? It'd be ten minutes of pure terror. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought this was great. I thought it was good showing like how uh fractured the team has is is and I liked that idea of Colson saying like Daisy what you have to be a leader. You have to like, and Deke talking about how when I first saw you guys, I'd seen people kill for each other, but I'd never seen people willing to die for each other. And like, I thought that was a great moment and seeing Deke hoard all the stuff in what he assumed was going to be his future room. <laughs> it's like, this, it's like, I'm going to keep all the stuff in my room and just wait for it to be my room. Uh, <laughs> that was, such a beautiful moment because like again coming from a, a broken world himself and coming from a survivor um society it makes total sense that he would absolutely hoard everything he could in or in order to like kind of store it away for himself for yeah. a future day um it was it was very in character and it was very endearing and then also uh the decision for him to leave he's like i could blink out of existence at any given moment, I've never fit in here. Uh, you guys do your thing. I'm going to go see the world. He could blink or dissolve into non-existence <laughs> at any given moment. He also found out what squirrels are. So. <laughs> I love that he's been reading up on um, on idioms. Yeah. That's so sweet. Um, yeah, how, again, talking about another heartbreaking what could have been, if, again, we, we establish that he still is alive after breaking the time loop, and then he dissolves into dust. <laughs> or maybe maybe being out of place in time would make him like kind of functionally immortal. <laughs> that would be funny too. <laughs> that would be an interesting yeah. storyline. Like I, I like, uh, I like storylines when people find out that they're immortal. <laughs> like, that's that's always fun. It's like yeah, it's not anything intentional. It's the person who's like least likely to like want that. Yeah. <laughs> but like, have fun. Yeah. yeah, if he could be like the Captain Jack Harkness of the show, I would not complain. Sure. Deke gets like resurrected into an immortal, like or like <laughs> celestial. Yeah, <exactly>. celestial <laughs> Deke. Celestial <laughs> Deke. He is the lemon collector. Uh, it is. It is nice though that the last scene. Like, I'm sad that we don't get him uh, in the final scenes of the show. But it is nice that his final scene is with Daisy. Uh, I would have liked one more scene with him and the grandparents. Um, but I also recognize that that might have been cut for time. Um, so it is nice that for for all for all his giant crush, you know, the last person we see him with is Daisy, and him telling her what the narrative of the show tells her she needs to hear. Also, one of Deke's grandparents is a misplaced time popsicle. <laughs> so Weird! <laughs> Weird! We're gonna have... Oh, okay, maybe it's a little too early to talk about that, but... but... I mean, that's... <laughs> Should we just skip to that? Like, because okay, we're, we're, we're talking it. about Deke and Daisy anyway? Yeah. Well, well, I mean, if we're gonna... T we're gonna <laughs> talk about, like, uh, Graviton, <laughs> it goes to Chicago, and we were talking about, it's weird that in all the stories of how the world was destroyed, they don't talk about the giant <laughs> alien spaceship that lands that crashed, in Chicago. Didn't land. Crashes crashed. into Chicago. Just, well, it didn't even crash. It just decided it to... settled in. Like, yeah, it rested on top of the building. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly, that was the pilot's first day landing. <laughs> I mean, it's well, Talbot. So. It was just well, Talbot. Yeah. Talbot's controlling. Like, where am I supposed to put this thing? He's oh, controlling well. Controlling it with gravity. <laughs> That's right. So and and then has like, he can fly. Yeah. He could put it anywhere and then just zoom to exactly where he needed to go. But instead, he's like, nope, gotta just drop this on top of the city. <laughs> where like, else am I gonna put it? Like they have a laptop video of Daisy yelling at Coulson, saying to take it when he gets back to the <laughs> back to the base. But no, no, like archived ideas or footage of a graviton and a ship in Chicago. <laughs> and you know, there were lots of extras 
in this episode too. Yeah. Like the most extras we've seen all season. Again, I feel like budget. I think <laughs> I think we went to more locations in this one episode than the entire season. It's also just the it, it was short, but the battle between Quake and Graviton oh, was beautiful. It like was so that, cool. That was a superhero battle, oh. you guys. In in one week. Um, and I won't spoil the pairing uh, in Deadpool 2, but if you've seen it, yeah, sure. you know exactly the one-on-one -on -one fight that I'm talking about. Absolutely. And then this, <laughs> and I'm just like, I got two of these things in a week? This is amazing. <laughs> uh, it's like Christmas came early. <laughs> when Daisy did the powered tackle, like when she did uh, like her boost tackle, I was like, this is yeah. this is the budget, and I'm glad it was worth all the corridors this season. It was worth every single corridor to I, just see and the we, Daisy tackle. Yeah, and we iced Graviton. Here's the thing. I'm going to say he's still alive. Because so? he's mm. he is so far from human at this point, he is sure. mostly gravitonium, which is still like in its fluid, like we see in this episode, it's in its fluid whatever state, like yeah. he's buried a mile, like three hundred feet underground. So sure. it's not like it needs air to survive. And it theoretically, you could probably freeze it, and it would be okay. Um, so like I'm willing to. Within comic book universe, especially, yeah. I'm willing to say that this gravitonium-based creature that is graviton, if you were to put it back in an atmosphere, would come back to life. Yeah, I, I feel like it needs a host, though, right? Maybe. Like, maybe it would just dissolve into gravitonium, yeah. and then like, you would have all of their minds still inside, and it would need... Be. I could see that, like I, the the gravitonium um, kind of melting, like uh, Senator Kelly in, in the oh first X Men movie. G Ghost in the chat just called him a Gramsicle. Oh, Gramsicle, oh. yummy. <laughs> uh. um, I I I could definitely see that of it just reverting reverting back to its liquid form when it found a habitable place. Yeah, I mean, my thought was like, oh, great, you sent it into space where all the Cree that we're looking <laughs> for it are. <laughs> Like, oh, oh no! Like, like this entire season, they've been like, "Give us the gravitonium," and then we just sent it we in a Talbot box it into space yeah. without like launching it towards a star or the sun or I don't. Would that have made things worse? Actually, like yeah, if we don't had launched, throw, don't, don't throw, throw gravitonium, gravitonium into, into the sun. sun. Shoot! If we had launched gravitonium into the sun, it would have caused a black hole, and then Thanos wouldn't have had a world to destroy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we did it. We beat Thanos. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely won. <laughs> Can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs or worlds. You I know. mean, through Thanos logic, that if you sacrifice the Earth for half the universe, that's worth it. Yeah, <laughs> it's a numbers game, uh, according to that line of thinking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it, uh, it is... It is tragic looking at this, uh, looking at the the graviton, you know, graviton's fate from the perspective of Talbot's story arc. Uh, yeah. You look at Talbot, and that is that is just a tragedy. Period. Um, he is a tragic figure because he was an antagonist um, who came around after several seasons of coming um, of like going head to head with our heroes again never in an evil way just in goals that were contradictory to what our heroes were trying to accomplish and then when he did have faith in them uh he got shot in the head for it and then was kidnapped and tortured and mentally broken and then in that state uh <laughs> became a super villain and uh, then here, as a last ditch effort, they try to reach out to his humanity, but ironically, their their past of just kind of not listening to what Talbot had to say or deceiving him ultimately is what solidifies him as a villain. Well, they did, I, yeah. they did an interesting thing this episode where they tried to have their cake and eat it too with talking about like them being soldiers, which is something that we've brought up a lot where it's like, they're not really acting like government trained agents in this show. Like they never really like they're, they never really act like spies and that's fine because we like the characters and that makes sense. But they, this episode, they tried to bring that soldier story back in and they tried to appeal to Talbot in, as a soldier. Um, 
But at the same time, and Zach and I were talking about this, they decided that the leader of their super spy organization, which is a military organization, should be the mechanic um, who has maybe three years of super spying under his belt. Uh, which is, which is great. I mean, I like Mac as a character, but like at the same time, they, they're talking about how we're soldiers and not to say that there aren't mechanics who are soldiers. There are a lot of amazing men and women in our armed forces who work in the mechanic corps, but you wouldn't choose a mechanic to be a general. Yeah. Like that. Like it's... you would want someone with like combat training and like tactical experience like may like may should be the leader of your spy team may <laughs> like it, it, like give her a few weeks off yeah like <laughs> give her a, then, like she can take she a should vacation lead your spy team but there's and it, it the problem is like i don't i don't buy mac as i don't buy him as a as a good decision maker for this kind of organization like colson and nick fury before him have always talked about having to make the hard call yeah they have like being the leader of shield means deciding sometimes somebody's gonna die so that somebody else can live yeah. and i don't see mac ever being able to make that decision in fact he's railed against having to make those kinds of calls yeah. in the past so I don't even know. when it was the right thing to do. Yeah, and I, I so I don't buy him. Like he would be a great advisor for Daisy or May if they were to take it over. Like he would be a good moral compass Here's... character for them to help guide their decisions. Yeah, but he's not going to be the person to like send a team into a hyper risky situation that will save ultimately save the day. If if like we want to go with the theory of like um, the reason why Coulson doesn't want to leave May in charge is what he said earlier in the season <clears throat> in that, like, you know, she's probably a few years away from retirement or in, in a, in a perfect world, she'd be a few years away from retirement. Yeah. That, but like, she like should, then, oh no, then, no, for sure. Then let her retire uh, as I, the I, leader I, of shield. I know. Right. Um, but like wanting, wanting Daisy to step up, like, if you go under that logic, then the the hierarchy should be Daisy and Mac as her advisor to be there to support and then kind of guide maybe some of her decisions. That being said, this is what I was talking about earlier with saying that Deke told her what the narrative says she needs to hear. Yeah. Um, I, I still maintain, I'm I'm kind of with you guys, I still maintain that if May's not going to lead, I do think Daisy should be the leader. Um, so her kind of stepping aside is a little bit of a surprise. What Mac does do really well is being able to appeal to the heart of the team. Yeah, and he grounds them. Yeah. Like, absolutely. Daisy does a really great job of pointing out he is their moral compass. Um, and that's important to have as a facet of the team, not necessarily the leader. Um, like, and even at the at the very beginning when they're on the verge of tearing each other apart, and this is this is some good writing. What does he say is the thing that can unify them all again? Hope. And yeah. it's like, oh, oh. That, the chat doesn't necessarily hurt. agree with us. Ryan McBain says Mac was perfect to lead. He's the moral compass. Um, JT Fax although says Mac is too moral. I, um, you you want a good balance of morals and pragmatism is kind of like as a leader you want someone who can make pragmatic decisions but also morally correct I, decisions. I will give I will give this decision credit, um, Mac, for a good long while. You know, for when Daisy has the tendency to run off and make emotional decisions. Sure. Um, you know, she ran off for a good half of a season after Lincoln died. Mm -hmm. um, and during that time, Mac had to work in tandem with Coulson. Yeah. Um, so he spent a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with Coulson. And so I, I definitely, I understand Daisy taking the stance of I'm too quick to make those emotional knee-jerk reactions, I'm not ready for it yet. In the meantime, Mac should be the leader. I do get it from that perspective because she does have the tendency to run off and do her own thing. Sure. And that's that's not necessarily the best thing for a leader to do. So this, I, I understand it, but at the same time, I'm like, or you could just stop running off and making those emotional decisions. <laughs> or just make May the leader. <laughs> or just make I, May the I leader. I honestly don't know why it's not... Okay, May, you're going to have a little vacation while you uh, 
help Coulson die. Um, <laughs> but then, but then you're gonna come back. You're gonna lead this squad. This or this like we're saying organization in very loose terms. There's about twelve people in Shield at yeah. this yeah. point, and after, like de- after, and like Deathlock after, running around somewhere. After Mace That's died. It. After Mace died, how how much of a organization is shield still that's that's a we great don't, question we honestly don't know it's a major question like somebody in the chat was just asking like what about uh fury and hill who we saw at the end of of uh, infinity war i mean yes they're they're gone but gone but like what were they i don't think they were still involved with shield i think they were just like two rogue agents like rogue agents slash yeah. friends who are like going to do things oh just buds <laughs> just buds you know, just buds doing like, you know it's hard to like stop like she technically works for stark yeah fury i think is just like he just goes around like he's do- just he's a retired guy who's just getting in everybody's business <laughs> yeah. yeah pretty much that's kind of what i imagine nick fury to be at all times he's, he's actually a pager salesman <laughs> yeah he just goes door to door knocking. That's why he has oh. a fancy color pager. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, before before we dig into the rest of the episode really quick, I want to talk to you guys about iTunes. Folks, thank you so much to everybody who's gone to iTunes to rate, subscribe, leave a comment. We love hearing from you. And it is the best way to let our producers know that you guys like the show that we're putting on. And as we mentioned last week, uh, we weren't able to do a shout out for the week that week and this might have been the end at the at the time of the last recording we thought this might have been the end so uh everybody who's gone to itunes to leave a comment so we could shout you out today it really means a lot thank you guys so much yeah um so there's a bunch so we don't have time to get to everybody's but i want to give a shout out to hmch of shield uh ernie kd uh taj taj i'm pretty sure taj dickens um uh joyful kia uh, Fosker, <laughs> who even says, like, it's me with the hard to pronounce name. Oh. Um, but to say, we love you and thanks again. Um, Prodigal358, so I can't cry. I can't say I didn't cry while watching. Um, and uh, tr- thank you, Travis Cat Slaughter. Um, <laughs> I don't know. That's their name. No, okay. Uh, Sorry. But I want to give a big shout out to Shield Intern number thirty three, who writes in saying, "So I was eavesdropping on the crew's little retirement party, and I don't know why I wanted Fitz to die. Well, now I wait because the Avengers are gone, and we aren't even going to talk about the aliens in New York. Great end to an amazing team. I'm graduating from intern. All two of us since Agent Kim passed. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, the intern core is a little light." Uh, Light on applicants these days. Yeah. Um, Thank you, everyone who comments and reviews. Yeah. Uh, it's awesome that you go out of your way to let us know and let the people who we work for know that you appreciate what we do. It it really helps us. Yeah. And uh, again, we're we're gonna be back next uh, next season, and so you know, feel free to keep those comments still coming. Um, we love you guys. And one of the highlights of my week uh, getting to do this show is just hearing you guys talk about how much you enjoy listening. So we love you guys. And keep leaving those reviews over the summer year, I guess, <laughs> um, because uh, so it, it, hel- it helps people find the show. Um, who knows? Like, uh, keep supporting. Maybe we'll like pop in for a well, random news update and, yeah. at and some point. And feel free to you know drop in on Twitter. You know there are going to be a couple Marvel movies coming out before Shield comes back. So oh yeah, love hearing your yeah, guys please Ant Man and the Wasp. <laughs> please talk to us about Ant Man and the Wasp and Miss Marvel. Oh my right. god, or Captain I Marvel. Sorry, Captain, uh, Marvel. Captain Marvel. Which maybe we'll have to we'll have to come back to talk about that one because that's going to very heavily and inv- well not heavily it's going to have Coulson, Coulson in, in it, it. Yeah. if they are not if they if they're smart at all they will just it doesn't have to do a lot they'll just have an a agent a, a, an agent of shield named Melinda May yeah. just running around with Coulson she doesn't have to do anything except be there cuz if you're going to be in shield there's going to be agents around have Melinda yeah, I, May I'm pretty sure that you could honestly Put Ming Na Wen in there as twenty years ago, and I would totally buy it. I would freak out. Uh, and I'd but be if happy. you needed to, if you felt the need to, also just cast a younger person to play Melinda May also would work. If they're casting or, Coulson the same, then yeah. like they can they can have her. I'm in just there saying. Well. Or if you wanted to cast a little girl who's looking up at Captain Marvel, all starry eyed, a actually little girl with brown hair. Actually, they've they've Kevin Feige also already said um, that he is actively making plans for Miss Marvel 
to come. They're just waiting for this movie to hit. That would be kind of great. They, uh, they, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They they announced they announced uh, plans for Miss Marvel. Absolutely. Yeah. They, my, there's no details in terms yeah. of like who's writing it or any timeline, but they're like, yeah, we're gonna do it. Miles, uh, or did, like Marvel has written me a love letter because Miles is getting a movie. Mm. Miles Morales is getting a movie. Uh, Robbie Reyes was in Shield last year. Absolutely. And now there are plans for Kamala Khan. So thank you, Marvel. For everything <laughs> about this is great. Uh, okay, we need to we need to get back to the episode. Well, just just uh just one more thing about the comments. I was reading through the comments on YouTube. And like the, there were a lot of people who were talking about how they were really worried that we were going to be off the air, and like they'd started with season one, and that Aww. like we were their kind of podcast family. And I just want to say we feel the same way about you guys. Like when you guys comment and stuff like that, it feels like we're really interacting with you and talking with you guys. So so thank you for all those things. No, it's studio hey. audience. <laughs> Hey, studio audience, you've been very quiet for the last two seasons. So studio this audience, is a who's weird always time. been there. It's a weird. Oh, you're, finally Whoa. we get cheers. It's Don't been. Me, like, I'll, Jesse, hold me back. Okay, okay. you finally. <laughs> oh, how dare you? How dare all of you? Real quick, before this becomes the Mari Povich James, show, half of them just that. disappeared. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, um, no joke. Not to That's not where to Matt go. And Joyce in. went. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you stop. <laughs> um, real quick, not to not to get too far into a, a segue, but Agents of Shield was the first show I ever did here at AfterBuzz. Oh. Um, and so this show, even though uh, a lot of other shows have come and gone, and I've been the lead for a lot of other shows, like this one has always had, had a special place in um, the Chesto region where I would have a heart if I had a heart. But oh. uh. <laughs> instead of the gaping black hole of gravitonium that's there but no uh, mac again, has the biggest heart he does <laughs> anatomically speaking <laughs> <laughs> so uh this show really does it means a lot and you guys commenting does mean a lot so thank you guys um <laughs> let's get back to it um because this finale didn't end with everybody sort of getting out unscathed we do have one big casualty and they they teased a couple sort of. like they, yeah, yeah, kind of, question mark. I, I really like the moment where it looked like everything was falling into place, where it was like maybe they were stuck in the loop. Like both of you you and I were watching it, and I was like, <laughs> oh, everything's happening the, the way it's supposed yeah, to happen. Both Mac and Robin's mother are uh, in the ship, ship. Yeah. and uh, we're like, wait a minute, the people who live are outside of the ship, and the yeah. people who don't make it are inside of the ship. This is bad. Daisy's yeah. getting absorbed by Graviton. Like it looks like everything's everything's going wrong and then like uh when robin goes like wait things have changed uh that's that's nuts from a time travel perspective number one but also it's a great moment because it then led to the awesome fight and everything like that it was like this great rallying moment and then we got the sadness of a tool shed being inside of fits oh jeez uh now this is this is an interesting moment because uh, as we, as the debris is starting to fall, you know, after Mac and uh, Polly have gotten off the ship, uh, Daisy attacks Gravitonium once she gets her, her power up, which that was an awesome moment. Coulson not taking the antidote and instead slipping it to Daisy as they were hugging. Yeah. Um, like slipping it into her gauntlets. That was a great moment. And the moment she injects it into herself to give herself that freaking super saiyan power up that's that's one other thing i want to point out is like anytime quake gets into a fight scene it the show always likes to go full anime and i don't have any complaints about that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i don't have a problem i with also it. don't understand how that worked but i'm okay with it like <laughs> like i don't understand how a healing centipede potion did it also boost her quake powers I'm the, just wondering if those are permanent. Like, if she's permanently gotten an. Upgrade. I mean, they did. They have. They did set this up. I mean, um, they say that like Garrett had like some extra. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. They were like, it's gonna give you a little extra mojo. I believe was the quote. Okay. Um, I forgot so I about think the mojo line. <laughs> uh, they they went to the mojo verse and uh, they came back and thank that's goodness. that's the explanation. And then she hit him so hard he reached orbit. They hit it, she hit him so hard he saw the curvature of the earth. <laughs> Um, but, uh, but when she does that, it causes debris to fall right on top of Fitz and give the show a lot of credit. 
it looked like he got hit with a it didn't look like he got hit with a prop it looked like he got hit with something that had a lot of weight to oh, it it was brutal yeah yeah and when they when they showed like that siding in like inside of him and like the <laughs> blood's coming down like that was that was brutal and like his just repeating talking about his legs like it, it felt like it reminded me of like saving private ryan uh, yeah. Like that beginning scene, like it was, it was really brutal. Um, yeah, and that was that it, was nasty. It was a brutal end to a character who's had a very interesting arc over the last few seasons in terms of where his moral compass lies. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, where we left off with Mac and Fitz um, prior to this moment was, you know, them still not having gotten back on good terms yeah i mean fitz is a really complicated character from his actions this season we we're talking about it he had he he chose to perform surgery on daisy without her permission uh, without her consent and without like anesthetic and yeah. that kind of thing which in the end saved the world because if daisy didn't have her powers she wouldn't have been able to fight graviton but at the same time, like that is that is a, an evil act to do. It's even like what down to what Talbot says in those last moments is like that ends justifying the means. It's yeah. like it's it, it's a big question that like it's a moral question that nobody has a perfect answer for. Yeah, it, like we as much as we like love Mac, one of the things we keep talking about is needing to make the hard call and not being sure if Mac as a leader can make the hard call. But at the end of the day, like. Fitz is the type of person to say the ends justify the means. Coulson, to an extent, is the type of person that would say the end justifies the means. Uh, and yeah, Talbot uh, Graviton are, is the is using that same argument. So it's it's definitely a perspective that isn't necessarily one hundred percent evil, but yeah, it's hard to justify it when you're doing a lot of evil yeah. things to get but like, there. Like real quick, because. It's pretty evil to perform yeah. surgery on yeah. someone without it's pretty evil. and but but in this yeah. moment yeah. they but, yeah. they sort of reconcile yeah. or, but, yeah. or at least Mac has forgiveness in yeah. this final moment. Yeah, I just want to say because we're running a little yeah. on time, um, I because we did uh, to talk about like the physical. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and I'm I'm very torn on this. Uh, right now because like i thought it was a great send-off for fitz like it was emotional like, i loved having mac there the yeah. last little like fitz mac yeah um thing like and they even, were such good friends even mac that such a, an effect moment on him. when mac comes back and you see Gemma's reaction and yeah. then again we don't see deke for for a little bit and the fake out of like the in remembrance thing i thought was was handled was well pretty done, well yeah. i like that but i'm the comic book killed him and I was like, I th I was actually really ready for them to have killed him, killed him. Yeah. So now that like we're getting this like Fitz back who didn't perform the surgery, didn't, he still got some twisted stuff going on mentally from the framework. But didn't it, marry Gemma. It has didn't go through the marriage. Like he's gonna be super disoriented, obviously as Gemma puts it. But I just it feels like it was. I, I, uh, it it's, would have been stronger if he'd actually just died as opposed to now or just like resetting it's him. It's going to be interesting seeing how Ian de Castecker plays him next season. Yeah. Um, that being said, I kind of think it's gross. Like, it's like this character dies and it's like, it's okay. We have a new one, a better Excuse one me. that didn't do the bad things. I'm like, that's kind of skeevy. It, it is weird. And I think it again, it is a decision that they made before they knew that this was the end of the season and not the end of the series because that is something where it's like oh there's gonna be a fits in the future yeah and, this, and now they've got to address like now they've got to follow through if, with that if this was um if this was a series finale i i would be a lot more okay with it of like hey you know Gemma still has fits like that that's it's a little bit better of a bookend as a season thing as a season end it's kind of gross again so like that that's sort of my thought on that We'll see where it goes. We'll see if Ian Dick Secker is back next season. Yeah. It also uh, means Enoch is back. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, the one, that's a good thing. More yeah. Enoch. I like Enoch. Yeah, me fun. too. I'm, I'm happy Enoch's there. Yeah. I definitely I definitely like the, the happy ending aspect of things if this was the series finale. But 
as a season finale, I take a, a little bit of issue with it, but you can't really blame them because they didn't know. No, they had to address it. Yeah. yeah. I would have been, we would have been more upset if they hadn't addressed this major timeline, like, hole. That and, they, yeah. they, and we were even it. talking about how, like, they, <clears throat> it's hard to redeem that character after he does the things he does. So they found a way to redeem that character without, like, just killing him. Yeah, him yeah. running onto that ship, uh, helping to save Mac and Polly, that, that, you know, putting his life on the line to potentially do that, you know, to do that, that... Well, that's I, a, okay. I was talking about him just being a time ba- popsicle, <laughs> like out of time popsicle. Because like now it's now it, it's we're gonna get Fitz back. It's just not Fitz who, you know, uh, had surgery on Daisy. Yeah. Again, it's it's an interesting thing. Uh, it's it's a moral gray area. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm glad that they addressed it though. Yeah. Um, well, we are sadly running short on time. Do you guys have any final thoughts before we wrap it up for the evening? I will miss this show for a year. Yeah. A year is a long time. Uh, um, but I am ex- I, like this was a good uh, season finale uh, overall, and I I look forward to it coming back. And in the meantime, we'll get Clark Gregg in 1995. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go back and watch that Daisy Graviton fight like a million times. That was awesome. This episode was awesome, and it was very like like I said, it was a great ending for the Daisy and Coulson story. Like, it was really emotionally satisfying. Yeah. And I loved all the twists and turns. I love that they kind of find, found their way out of the time problem in a creative way. I, I'm looking forward to getting to go back and rewatch this season because there, because we, we did play with time in the way that we did, seeing all of the sort of little clues that they left at the very beginning and seeing how all of that sort of comes around. And, yeah, it was... Ending in Tahiti was a good choice, yeah. and I oh, I'm going to miss this. But is show. it really Tahiti? Yeah. <laughs> also, bring back Deke. Yes, please bring back Absolutely. Deke. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting to see where they go because we don't know how Infinity War is going to shake out. So that's it, why they're waiting until after Infinity War Part Two before we get anything. So, uh, in the meantime, guys, send us your theories about what you think uh, Season Six is going. Who to Who will survive? Tell us down below <laughs> in the comments. Uh, and again, just. Thank you guys so, so much for tuning in. We love you. We'll see you next year. Jesse, where can people go if they want to find you? Uh, yeah, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at JessKlein1. That's J-E-S-S-K-L-E-I-N, the number one. Come talk to me about all your nerdy stuff. I'll talk to you back. Uh, I'm Zach Wilson. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at that Zach Wilson. T-H-A-T-Z-A-C-H. W-I-L-S-O-N. Uh, please stay tuned there because I have a couple projects that are beginning to brew and I'm very Ooh. excited for when I can get to announce them um, and I'll be able to do that on Twitter. So stay tuned. Uh, if you haven't already done so, follow Tehran at I am Tehran on uh, the social media atmosphere. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the Mengwin. That's T-H-E-M-E-N-G-U-I-N. Uh, if you want to check out a special episode of the podcast Hollywood Happy Place, I uh, joined uh, the host Jerry to talk about Infinity War. Mm. Uh, that was before we knew Shield was getting renewed, so it'll be <laughs> take it with a grain of salt. Um, and then also, I just launched a podcast t- called No Love Lost, which is a Lost retrospective. If you guys want to go and check that out mm. again, thank you all so 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 much for joining us this season. We're gonna miss you during the hiatus, but we will see you in season six. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. It's, it's a, a magical, magical place. place. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.